This is our friend's house and they hired us to completely transform their main living spaces. And when I say us, I mainly mean my wife who can transform spaces like nobody's business. And in this video, we're showing you every step of our 90 day journey where we transform their kitchen, living room, dining room, and guest bathroom. So join us for the adventure as we give this house a DIY extreme home makeover. Where are we going? Why is there a rug in my floorboard? We're going to our next big project house. This is another friend of ours that I've been, we've been talking and dreaming of this for like two or three years now. And so it's really exciting. To so what are we doing today? Today we're meeting with Justine and kind of working through all the final design elements, everything. Fine tuning it, she'll help me just make sure I'm not missing anything so that we can be ready to hit the ground running next week and know what we're doing and not be second guessing things along the way. <laughs> All right, let's get her done. The power of two moms in minivans. Uh, Better be careful when you see a woman in a minivan. <laughs> That's what I was just saying. The house is about to be transformed. We were so excited to finally get in the house and get started. And as we walked in, our friends had the sweetest, most unexpected surprise for us. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me, bro? What? They're like, we're gonna be preemptive and keep Dean from raiding our pantry while he's here. I would never raid okay. anyone's pantry. Honey bunches of oats? Some of that. Are you really gonna eat some of those? We're redoing the pantry, not not raiding the pantry. Whatever. Thanks, neighbor. After a few snacks and feeling so welcomed and loved, we got to work talking about the final design elements of this kitchen. All the fur downs have come down, and so my thought is just have that end right there. Yeah. I can do like a bar top that comes out, you know, so it's the same over here. I'll have to see what she thinks about marble. Oh, what are we gonna do with the microwave? I guess I'll make a spot for it in there. Out. Only move your eyes. Good. So the plan in here is we are going to keep all of the same lowers, but we are going to be getting new cabinet doors. That's called refacing your cabinets and then building new uppers that go all the way up to the ceiling. And it is going to make this space feel so much more open, so much bigger. And then on the refrigerator wall, we will be building an entire wall of cabinets around the refrigerator just for a little bit more storage space and a really cool feature. <laughs> Your level of excitement on this project is really off the charts. After we finished up, we grabbed our bundle of goodies and I was just so excited to finally be starting on this project. So on a scale of one to 10, what is your excitement level right now? Probably like a 9.5. The next day was an exciting one as we were fired up and ready to start demo. The day of demo is upon us. What in the <laughs> world is this? <laughs> I don't drink enough water. Babe, that's enough water for like four humans for a week. Demo <laughs> The welcoming committee. All right, darling. Okay, so it's demo day. And we're bending down like this Wired. because I forgot the camera stand. But for now, we just wanted to bend down and let you know we're going to get started on demo. What are we going to be doing here? We're going to be demolitioning. I'm so excited to pull these fur downs down. It's going to look so much better. It's going to look so big in here. Winter, it's demo day today. Isn't that exciting? All right, so first I'm gonna work on pulling down all of these upper cabinets. So I'm gonna pull the trim down first and then see if we can pull these down in one piece without breaking them, <laughs> hopefully. Let's get it. Another one bites the dust, you know? Maybe it's just me, but I think you ought to move that glass bottle, you think? All right, so. I actually see one board that is coming down and attached to the cabinet and it's going up into the fur down and so, which we're taking out anyway, but I'm gonna start pulling those down and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense how to pull these down because they are stuck, really stuck. <laughs> Once I started opening up the fur down, I was able to pry out the one board that was really holding that cabinet in place. Then I grabbed Dean's help and we finally got this cabinet removed. Do you want me to try to yank anything? 
By this point, I realized that these cabinets were absolutely impossible to pull down in one piece because of all of the giant nails going in various directions. And so we were able to move a lot faster and not worry about keeping them all intact. So knowing that we could explode some stuff, I got a little excited. Stand up, D! Demolition Day! Woo! Whoa, babe. After we removed all the cabinets over the peninsula and by the sink, we moved on to the range wall and removed the microwave first so we were sure not to damage it. Next, I used my sawzall to get out the rest of the cabinet around the microwave bin. Then I finished removing the rest of the upper cabinets on the range wall. You're such a bad man at jamming, you know what I mean? Does it feel good to rip things out? Let's be honest. I was actually thinking how nice it would be to watch somebody else do this, but it is a little bit fun. Okay, this is fun. That made some of the strangest sounds I've ever heard. By this point, it was starting to get a little bit messy, so we took a break to clean up. Oh, I got it! While Dean kept working on clearing out all of the trash, I got to work on removing these fur downs. All right, how's it going up there? This is hard. <laughs> it's ready to come out <laughs> after working on this thing for a long time my arms felt like they were about to fall off and so i had to call in some backup coach called me into the game it's time to play yeah let's go this is demo day demo day this is the straddle maneuver i won't take no for an answer you have been bested after a little break i was ready to jump back in and get the rest of these fur downs removed as andrea continued working i went out and grabbed us some lunch because it was definitely time for a lunch break walk to lunch here go through the gauntlet sandwich check chip check sparkling water check we've got all the essentials yes, yes. Did we both just spill it? Mm -hmm. I missed my mouth. Mm -hmm. All right, so we just finished up lunch and we are ready to finish. We've got about an hour before we have to go pick up our kids. It looks like it's just about done, but there are two by fours that go along the ceiling that were the top portion of the fur down and then along the wall. So we're gonna have to pry all of those off. I'm hoping it's not too hard, but before we do that, we're gonna clean up just a little bit to get some of the bigger debris out of the way. After a quick cleanup, we jumped back in and finished up this demo. After we finally finished all of the demo, we were ready to clean this place up, call it a day, and go pick up our kids. Even though demoing the kitchen left things looking pretty messy, it was already looking so much more open and getting a lot easier to visualize just what a difference the new cabinets were going to make, especially being able to take them all the way up to the ceiling. Whoa, look at that house. <laughs> all right, so we're here in the Home Depot parking lot. Andrea is doing some very complicated math, some rocket science. So we're gonna take her drawing, her dimensions, go inside and get materials to build the upper cabinet boxes. Is that correct? Correct. So we'll be using three quarter inch plywood, whatever they have, maple, birch, paint grade. It's all similarly priced. Crazy, $82 for a sheet of 
plywood. But since I know how deep the cabinets are, I can have them rip them all down to the correct depth and then we can fit in our minivan easier. All right, let's do it. Let's get in there. Go for it. Go for it. Don't worry folks, I'm a professional. Me and Wood get along really well together. All right, it's a modern day miracle. We got them, folks. Well, you might notice that we're not loading any wood right now. Well, we ran into a bit of a problem, eh? Just a little bit. <laughs> so we have done this so many times where we have them rip down the plywood. Today, for some reason, the blade was cutting kind of like at a wobbly angle and so a lot of the boards if you look down the side it was like this and i'm like that will not work for cabinetry <laughs> and we lost what about an hour about an hour <laughs> but what else are we gonna do we're gonna move forward and, oh. and make it work so it's all you can do we're gonna move have forward. some sheets delivered that's what we're gonna do well, it turned out that the delivery truck was actually broken down for the next two weeks. So we had to go to plan C and we borrowed a truck from our good friend to pick up the materials for these cabinets. I feel tough, I feel Texan, I got a truck. You just wait, these are gonna turn into beautiful kitchen cabinets. Oh, go, go! I love you, truck. Sometimes you gotta slap a truck on the butt. After taking the truck back, we were finally ready to set up our work area and get started on these cabinets. I started by ripping down all of the plywood to the depth that I would need for the cabinets. Two down, how many to go? Not too many. I mean, I need six of these total. And then I'll work on the, the deeper cabinets. Okay. This okay. is the easy part. <laughs> the cabinets around the refrigerator will be deeper than the other upper cabinets. And so I adjusted my rip cut guide and continued ripping down the rest of the plywood. And this process definitely took a while. So I tried to keep things fun. Let me get this for you, babe. Let me get it for you. Oh, thanks. No, no babe. I need that board. Do you? Good looking wood. I finished ripping down all of the plywood. I needed my miter saw to make the rest of the cuts, and so I hired Dean's help to get that out. I hate this thing. You're so heavy! Last one. Is that it? That's it. Whew. The next day, we were ready to jump back in and start assembling these cabinets. A uh, banana boat? Love that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I have cut all of the plywood pieces for my cabinet boxes. And next, I'm gonna be assembling them using pocket holes. So I'm gonna make pocket holes on all of the top and bottom of each box so that I can screw those into my sides. And it's gonna be a lot of pocket holes. All right, I like the matching gloves, I like it. Cause it's like 95 degrees, man. It's probably hotter than that. The breeze feels good when the wind blows. <laughs> oh yeah. So next I'm actually going to be routing a little quarter inch groove along the back side of all of these plywood panels. And that is because I'm going to, for the back of all of my boxes, be sliding in a sheet of quarter inch plywood into those grooves before I attach the top part of it. This router also makes a really pleasant sound. Oh. 
There's a lot left. This is taking a little bit longer than I thought. <laughs> you got this, babe. I believe in you. What's next? More sunscreen. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Cameraman and sunscreen applier. Okay, so what's next next? <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling some of the cabinet boxes and then cut the backs of the cabinets so we can hopefully finish the cabinets. It ended up being so late in the day that I was only able to assemble two of the small boxes, but thankfully that put us in a good position the next day to be able to finish everything up. All right, so it's the next day. We're gonna try and beat the heat today. We got out here early and hopefully can get these cabinets assembled. I'm gonna start out by figuring out the size that I need for the back panels, which I'm gonna be using that quarter inch plywood for. Then I'll cut that down. We'll slide those in, start assembling the cabinets and see how far we can get before it gets too hot to work anymore. <laughs> Sand on Careful. Still don't like you. That's a baby hammer. That's a baby hammer. I took it from one of our babies. First cabinet box assembled. Minus the face frame and filling my pocket holes on the bottom, but looks pro. Work. I'm feeling pretty proud. <laughs> After assembling the first cabinet box, I moved on to the second, and it was so exciting to see these finally start to look like cabinets. Cool. <laughs> you look just like Tinkerbell. I don't look like Tinkerbell. Cabinet number two. Look at these. So it'll be like upper cabinet, vent hood, upper cabinet, and that hutch cabinet. I'll build the hutch one next because I like order. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. After finishing the two smaller upper cabinets, I moved on to this larger hutch cabinet which will actually go from countertop to ceiling and have glass doors. Okay. That's one big clamp. The big clamp ended up being worth every penny as it was so helpful to be able to tightly clamp everything together as I was screwing it in. And once I finished this larger box, I arranged them on the ground like they would be in the kitchen and it was starting to look really good. It looks pretty good, don't you think? Yeah, it looks amazing. Just uh, building custom cabinets in the driveway, no big deal. <laughs> Just another day in the office for the DIY wife. This is pretty cool. Is that it? You done? Oh, done until next week. That's where we are. Oh my gosh, it's getting hot. We're taking a break until next week. We're gonna get all this put away, ready to start fresh next week. All right, it's a new week and it is so windy today. We're ready to get everything out of the garage, get our saw horses set up, get the cabinets out, and get these cabinets finished. I started by measuring and cutting all of the pre-primed 1x2s that I would use for the face frames on the range wall. Next I added pocket holes on the top and bottom 1x2 since those would attach to my left and right face frame pieces. Alright so I have finished making all the cuts for my upper cabinets on the range wall side. Now I'm going to assemble them using the pocket holes that I made, wood glue, and I'm going to clamp them together just to make sure I've got them perfectly, perfectly aligned. After I had my boards glued and clamped together, I screwed them together using one and a quarter inch coarse threaded screws. Okay, work it, work it. Moment of truth, make sure I measured right. All right. Look at you, you're a cabinet builder. I really hope like when we put all these in, you know, everything is good. After finishing the first face frame, I repeated this process for the rest of the cabinets on the range wall.
Once I finished all of the cabinets on the range wall, I moved on to the cabinets that would go around the refrigerator. I repeated the same process of measuring, making all of my cuts, then doing all of the pocket holes, and then assembling using wood glue, a clamp, and one and a quarter inch screws. Once I had all of my face frames finished, I attached them to the cabinet boxes using wood glue and a brad nail. Once all of the face frames were attached, I used wood filler to fill all of the nail holes. After Andrea finished up the face frames, I felt like it was time for a well-deserved lunch. How did you? After a delicious lunch, it was time to apply more sunscreen and get back to work. I started by sanding down all of the wood filler on the face frames and then moved on to sanding the rest of the cabinets. You done? Yep. Once I finished sanding everything down, I grabbed my leaf blower and blew off all of the extra dust. Feel the power. All right, we are ready to take these cabinet boxes over to their house so we can measure and order the doors. So we're gonna get the seats out of our van, load it up. Hopefully we can fit all of them in one trip, but if not, we might be making two trips. After that, we finished loading in the rest of the boxes, making sure that any visible sides of the cabinets were not going to be rubbed or banged on our drive over there. DNA movers on the move. When we arrived, we brought all of the cabinet boxes inside, and it was so exciting to see them in the actual space. Yeah. All right, we have all of the cabinets inside. Next, I need to pull off some of the backsplash, a little piece of the countertop over here so we can make sure all of the cabinets fit. This is like the moment of truth. I'm praying we don't have to make any kind of changes after this part. Like a glove. Whoa, that's crazy. Thankfully, the biggest cabinet box fit perfectly and then we moved on to the cabinet over the fridge. Atlas man! I'll just leave him there for a little while. <laughs> Babe, I've already been under here for 47 minutes. Come on. This is like torture. Out more. I'm shaking my brain. Oh, mamacita. This is gonna be so close. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> wow. By the hairs of your chin chin little chin. After fitting all of the cabinets around the refrigerator, we moved on to the range wall. All right, so we are pausing here for the day because we've got to go pick up our kids from school. And you might be wondering why we actually just brought these in. We didn't actually install them, attach them to the walls, and that is because I really just needed the reassurance that they were going to fit, that we weren't gonna run into any problems before we measure and order all of the doors for the kitchen. Everything fits, praise God. <laughs> now we can go ahead and measure for the doors, build a vent head, and do everything else. A very successful day. <gasps> yes, oh, it feels good. This looks good. All 
All right, so one of the last things I need to build for these cabinets is our custom vent hood cover. And I'm gonna do this one a little bit different than I've done in the past. And since we're gonna be incorporating some arches elsewhere in the house, I thought it would be fun to have some sort of curved element. But since there are going to be arches within sight of the vent hood, I didn't want my front to arch. So I decided instead to have it be like a regular box where the front of it curves out like this. that I needed. I already had my plywood ripped down to the correct depth, which was about 18 inches, and so the next step was to cut the height for the side panels. All right, so I've cut the side pieces of my vent hood and what I need to do now is figure out what kind of curve I want to do. So I've marked up at the top about how far I want it to come out because I know my upper cabinets are gonna come out about 12 inches and I want it the top of my curve to come out a little bit past that. I'm basically gonna be freehanding this and once I get it, what looks good to me, I will just cut it and then I'll trace it onto the next board so that they match up. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Simple. It's elegant. It is. Like you. Ah, thanks. Okay, so next I need to cut a piece of plywood for the bottom of my vent hood, which then later I'll be able to cut the hole in that that the range insert is actually going to attach to. We're gonna use a solid piece of plywood and then I'm gonna use some scrap one by four, some scrap plywood I have to cut pieces for the back of my range and then the front where I'm gonna attach my curved board. Hey, is that my javelin? It is, and I have to cut off the end of it because uh -oh. what happened to it? It got launched into a world record. That's what happened to it. Ugh. No, babe! I need that board! Give me, give me this. No, 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 no. Okay, so that's the bottom piece. All right, so now I'm ready to assemble everything. I'm going to start by attaching my bottom piece. So I'm using, again, wood glue, pocket holes for everything. Handsome Helping Hands comes in helpful once again. After getting the bottom and sides of the vent hood attached together, I started adding one by three scraps to the front and the curved portion and the back for support. Once I had all of the supports in place, I measured and cut a piece of quarter inch plywood for the curved front of the vent hood. I attached the quarter inch plywood using wood glue and a lot of screws, which I was sure to countersink a bit so I could fill them in later. After taking a break to add a bit more sunscreen, I cut another piece of quarter inch plywood to cover up the rest of the front. I then attached that with wood glue and a brad nail. Next, I mixed up some Bondo and used it to cover all of the screw holes and any gaps or cracks or edges so that I would have a nice smooth base before we paint it. Once the bondo was dried, I sanded it down smooth with 150 grit sandpaper. Y'all done? I think so. I'll have to touch up some fill in some spots again. 
Okay, so I've got it mostly sanded. I can already see a couple of little spots I'm gonna need to touch up, but I wanna go ahead and spray a little bit of a primer on it so I can make sure that it's looking smooth enough because I don't wanna get it installed and then spray paint on in the house and go, it's not looking quite right because by that point, it's a little too late. Like what is happening here? <laughs> well, I haven't done this with the pink kind before and it's it's not mixing as easily. And so I need a little sensory. <laughs> Are you in pre-K? <laughs> Once I had the drywall compound thoroughly mixed with water, I used a large brush to apply a generous amount. I love the color combo that you have going on. Just kind of the wood on the black on the pink is, is really looking good. Uh -huh. I'm just kidding. I trust you. <laughs> As I finished applying the first coat, the weather was not exactly cooperating with us. Babe, I'm feeling some water drops. Yeah. Yeah, we might need to get inside. <laughs> Look, I'm carrying it. It is sprinkling now. Hopefully the rain will stop. After the weather cleared up and the drywall compound dried, I pulled the vent hood back out to give it a thorough sanding with my random orbital sander. If it looks like I'm sanding most of it off, it's because really I am, but the goal is for it to stay in the wood grain and give a nice smooth surface for the paint to apply to. After sanding everything down smooth, the final step was to install the range hood insert. I started by measuring and marking where I wanted the hole and then used a large drill bit to drill holes in each of the corners and my jigsaw to cut out the entire rectangle. Once the hole was cut out, I made sure that the range insert actually fit. All right. Hey, it fits. Yay. All right, so we got the vent hood finished and it's looking a bit of a mess right now, but it is going to look so good once it's painted. And we actually have drywall guys coming next week and we need them to do drywall before we can install and hang all of these. So we are gonna start working on some arches for some arch doorways so they can do the drywall around that. The first step in building these arches was to go over to their house and measure the doorways. Let's make our first and most important stop and that would be over here. <gasps> what? Mm. Who's this weirdo, Winter? These snickerdoodle cookies are delicious. You know what I'm saying? All right, so today we're gonna be working on arching these doorways. So we have two doorways that we're gonna arch. This one and there's another matching doorway right here that go into the kitchen. So step one is to pull off all of the trim so I can measure and then I'm actually gonna go build the arches at our house and we'll bring them back. So let's pull some trim off, let's measure, then we'll be getting materials and then hopefully start building these arches. <laughs> That's crazy. I always thought these were actual wood floors. <laughs> it's just a vinyl. Hey, hey. I moved on to the second doorway and continued removing the trim. And I guess I shouldn't be too surprised at how difficult this trim was to remove given how the cabinets were built, but they were being pretty stubborn. done. We're done? We made a big mess. It looks like Andrea has been here, certainly. After I finally had all of the trim removed, we took all of the boards outside and did a quick cleanup. All right, so we have all the trim out, so I'm gonna measure really quick so I know how big to build the arches. So we're gonna go get materials, head back to our house. Well, how many is too many? I don't know, but three is not too many. Once we cleaned up and had the measurements we needed, we headed to Lowe's to get the supplies we needed to build these arches. Bye, Winter. Bye. 
I decided to use two by four foot sheets of half inch OSB for the arches because it was the most cost effective for this project. Fastest Lowe's trip ever. Once we got back from Lowe's, it was time to set up the tools and get started. And I even tried to teach Andrea some dance moves, but she wasn't having it. You're so bad I, at I this. am not a synchronized swimmer. I'm a swimmer, man. You again. Yeah. Ah. Well, it looks like you lose again. Yes. No. For the finish, it's gonna be incredible. I won't do it. Come on. No. No. Come on. Fine, I'll do it with myself. Paparazzi, man. Relentless. Hey, hey everybody, taking an autograph, autograph, autograph. All right, so we're getting ready to make these arches and we picked up this OSB at Lowe's. It's two feet by four feet. Both of our doorways are almost three feet wide. Basically, I'm gonna cut these to the width of my door, and then we're gonna figure out exactly the size I wanna do my arch, and I'm gonna use a simple method of a string and a pencil to draw my arch and then cut it out with a jigsaw. I started by cutting each sheet of OSB to the same width as my doorways. All right, these are the pieces for door number one. Now I've gotta draw my arch, and we'll cut it onto both of these pieces kind of making this up as I go. Basically what makes sense to me is I've got the width of my door and so I'm setting my radius of my circle or my arch at half of that. I've marked the middle, put my screw right at the center point, should draw me like these little arch corners because I want to keep our the top of our doorway as big as possible and so I'm actually not going to bring it down at all. I just want those corners arched. Nice. Yep. Once I had my first arch figured out and cut, it was a pretty simple process to then trace that on the rest of my boards and cut those out as well. So now I need to cut my spacer boards because these, you know, your wall is the thickness of the 2x4. If I need this to be thick, that's why I've got two of them. So I'm going to have some 2x4 pieces I'll cut in between, put them together. Attach this in the corners of my doorway, get it all drywalled in, easy peasy. Absolutely marvelous. You know what's marvelous is I'm not doing the drywall. We have our drywall guy coming already to do a bunch of other stuff, so he is gonna do the arches, cause he is the expert. It's gonna look a lot better if he does it. <laughs> Are you building a Jenga set? Yep. Once I had all of my 2x4 spacers cut, I started arranging them and figuring out what would be the best layout, and then once I had them placed, attached them using wood screws. Dun 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 All right, these look good. Now I've just got to repeat all of this again for the second doorway, and I'm just gonna use these to trace the arch onto the next boards after I cut them to the correct width. I've already got my two by fours cut, so hopefully this goes really fast. After finishing up the arches, we called it quits for the day, and the next morning we shifted gears a bit. All right, so where are we off to now? We are going to be attaching those arches that we just built yesterday. We have a sitter at the house for a short amount of time, so we are trying to be as, what's the word? Efficient. Efficient. I'm gonna print you a shirt that says, I love efficiency. <laughs> efficiency is my love language. It's time to get to work, Miss Efficiency. All right, I've got the arches that we built at our house over here, some three inch wood screws, and we're gonna attach them to the studs, and then that'll be that. It's such a wonderful sound, isn't it? The sound of beautiful arches being installed. <laughs> These arches were a relatively simple build, but they were having such a high impact on the space and it was so exciting to see them go in. My little arch. That's so lovely. After finishing up the arch on the first door, I moved on and repeated the same process on the second doorway. Nice. There's two That's so cool. Finally, I had both arches done, and even though they're still looking a little bit rough, it was so fun to imagine what they're going to look like all finished. Oh, look at that cute little arch. 
Good work, darling. Just another day in the office for the DIY yeah. wife or what? Look who came to join the party. Hey, Winter. What do you think about those arches, huh? I'd say you're pretty happy about them, huh? Look at that smile. All right, one of the last things we need to do for these cabinets this week is to measure for the new doors. We're gonna be ordering those from a website. It's a brand called New Doors. You can get them custom made to any size. They have really great guidelines for how to measure for the kitchen. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today so we can get those ordered so they can hopefully get here in time to then paint them and get them on the cabinets. After I finished measuring for the new cabinet doors, our drywall guys came in and started making all of the drywall repairs and finishing up these arches. And this was great timing because we needed them to finish the drywall in the kitchen before we could install all of the cabinets. Hey, where are we going? Where are we going? Would you slow down? We're a little bit late, so we do need to hurry. We're going to pick out countertops. We already think we know which ones we want because Laria went by there and saw like the perfect quartzite slabs. We're gonna go make sure they're still there and actually get our name on them because they are coming to measure the day after tomorrow, which is so exciting. Did we figure anything out or are we more confused now? Well, no, we figured stuff out, but what's hard is all of the ones that we like, all the slabs are taken. And so I think now we're just waiting to see when they're getting the next bundle. And I don't like waiting. And you're so patient. I can do this. Specialty. I love it when things get slowed down. I was like, so can you can order more of that like now, right? <laughs> can we still get on your schedule so you can install it like as soon as it gets here? <laughs> All right, so we're headed over to their house. The drywall guys are there now finishing up today and we are gonna see the completed arches for the first time. And I am so excited because I haven't seen since they've actually like added the little corner beads and taped and floated it all. It's gonna look so good. And then after that, we're getting the cabinets hung. This kitchen's gonna start coming together. Let's go see those arches. Oh my gosh, look at these. Whoa. I'm like, no wonder Larry keeps sending me messages. Like, I love these arches. Those are so pretty. Oh, look at this nice smooth edge. Man, this is why you hire it out. That is like perfect. That looks insane. All right, so last step before we get these installed is I'm gonna use this little Craig jig to add the, what do you call these? The holes for the adjustable shelves in all of these cabinet boxes that we built. This was actually my first time using this little shelf pin jig, but I love this thing. It was so easy and straightforward to use and made these perfectly uniform little holes that my shelf pins will go in for the adjustable shelving. big cabinet it's inside <laughs> once I had all of the holes drilled we were finally ready to install these cabinets after working on them for weeks Why not? like a glove does this vent hood feel a little low to you or <laughs> you're gonna be putting these up higher all right, first cabinet is up, it's looking good. I am not attaching that hutch cabinet yet because I forgot there's an outlet right behind it that we need to remove. We've got this one in, we're gonna do the vent hood next. I'm gonna have Dean help me hold it up and I'm trying to figure out where the studs are. Thankfully, since I'm going all the way to the ceiling, we can get some really long screws at a diagonal and hit that top plate. I really prefer to hit a stud or some sort of wood in the wall. Atlas man again. Starting to feel the burn. I mean, how hard are you pushing on it? Let go. Oh. I'm not gonna fall. Okay. Like... Where are you going? There's spider web in here. Oh, that was loud in here. You're in a moss. Oh. oh my gosh, okay. Careful. <laughs> 
Beautiful. Wow. Look at that cabinet wall. All right, so we have the uppers in, the vent hood in, and this one will be easy to do once we get that out the moved. I'm actually gonna add another one by two to the inside top of that one to make that opening smaller because I did make one kind of mistake in that I wanna leave enough room above my doors to attach crown molding at the top of these. So that's why you see a gap on some of them is there is going to be crown molding at the top of all of these. We'll get to that next week, but it is looking so good. All right, now it is time for the refrigerator wall. So this big cabinet is actually gonna be where they keep small appliances, and so I need to cut out a hole in the back of it for this outlet. We're gonna do that real quick and then get this thing installed. Probably our most difficult one. Need Atlas Man. <laughs> I don't know like where this is going. Need Atlas Man. Josh. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Gosh. Ah, help me. There is a stud here. You're looking at it. You are the slowest screwer in all the world. Oh my God. That is the most annoying sound of all time. I like that little victory sound it gave you. I know. I was like, wow. After getting all of the cabinets installed, it was time for a quick cleanup and it was so exciting to see this kitchen finally start to take shape. It's a big day, big it week. Is. All right, this is paint week and we are so excited. First thing I need to do today is run by the paint store and pick up all the paint. I, of course, ended up having to mix a custom color to get exactly what I wanted and so they've been mixing that up. We're gonna go see if it's ready and then get over the house. We still have a lot of prep to do, but can't wait to get all of this painted. All right, so we got all the primer. I got the lighter color for some of the cabinets and we got one final sample of the darker color. We're just still kind of tweaking it a little bit and I wanna test this one out in the house. And if it's right, we'll just call in, have them mix up a few gallons of that and go back and pick it up. But I always say this and I spend so much time trying to figure out the perfect color, especially on like a bold accent color like this because repainting it later is the biggest pain and it is worth really thinking it through, sampling the colors and getting just the right color so that we're 100% happy with it in the end. Okay. All right, so I started out by painting one last sample on this board and the paint dries a lot darker so <laughs> doesn't even look very different right now. But I'm gonna let this dry while we get started on a lot of random little prep items that we have left to do before we can actually start painting. All right, so for the new cabinet doors, we're gonna be doing a totally different hinge style that is actually gonna attach on the inside. You won't see it at all. So all of these little holes left from the last hinges, I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in, let that dry while we do a lot of the other little prep work.
Looks good. Next step, I actually grabbed some really thin plywood yesterday at Lowe's and had it cut down to cover these side panels where I have old cabinets meeting new cabinets. There's not really a good way to cover those seams. And if I try and do wood filler, it's gonna crack over time and just be noticeable. And I didn't really wanna add like trim to cover it up. So I just have that one little one there and then the end of this big pantry cabinet as well. There's a seam in the middle. So I'm just gonna cover them up with one big panel. We're gonna dry fit them first if they fit. Then I've got some um, liquid nails and brad nails. Since the larger pantry cabinet had a toe kick on the front, I needed to mark and then cut that out with the jigsaw. Then I sanded the edges smooth and brought it back inside to install it. I used a generous amount of liquid nails and then my brad nailer to attach the panel to the side of the cabinet. These side panels worked perfectly to give a nice smooth surface all the way up and hide that transition from the old to new cabinets. After I finished installing the side panels, the wood filler on the rest of the cabinet boxes was dry and so I went ahead and sanded that down and then removed all of the drawer boxes. And then next, I masked off all of the drawer slides using painter's tape. And as she finished that up, I knew that it was right about time for a lunch break. I've done my job. Let's Good eat job. lunch. After lunch, we started clearing off the countertops and getting ready to remove the old backsplash and countertops. That's not how you're supposed to attach that. It's like glued on with caulk. Oh my gosh. All right, so I've got all of the drawer hinges all taped up and covered up, and we're gonna start working on removing these countertops. I'll take the backsplash out first, start working on these. Then we've got a few last minute adjustments on some cabinet stuff, and then we'll be ready to actually start masking off and painting, <laughs> finally. I was able to get the backsplash out by myself, but once we started removing the actual countertops, I needed to grab Dean's help because these pieces are big and way heavier than they look. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, so to remove the countertop and sink, I have to turn off the water under there and then disconnect all of the plumbing. And this looks like a really new garbage disposal, so I wanna pull that off first so we don't damage it. It's really heavy. But the valve to turn off the cold water just broke. I was tightening it and it wasn't turning off, so I kept tightening it and now it really won't turn off. And so, I mean, nothing's like flooding. I just can't disconnect it or it's gonna spray water everywhere. So, I've texted our plumber. Maybe I can do it myself. I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna keep disconnecting everything else so that I'm ready to either replace that one valve or wait for our plumber to get here. Hey, where's your plumber's crack? I don't see it. Are you a real plumber? Stop. I don't see no crack, man. All right, so I ended up pulling the hedge cabinet down just because it felt like so much work to try and like get the countertop out and hang it like floating for them to slide the new 3CM counters in there. Now that we've got that out, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the stove out and the refrigerator out. But what our friends don't know is that we actually looked on Facebook Marketplace and found like the perfect deal of a really nice slide-in range. That way, like this beautiful quartzite countertop that we're gonna be installing, you can actually see. And so I am so excited. It was like the find of all times. I was like, oh my gosh, it's the brand we need. It's the kind I want and it's a good deal. I'm excited. We're gonna get these out. Keep getting ready to paint. That was really hard to remove. After removing the range, I went ahead and removed the refrigerator as well so I could easily paint all of the cabinets around it. 
Next, I started working on removing the plywood that was under the old countertops because the new countertops are 3CM and won't need the plywood underneath them. Before I could remove the rest of the countertops, I needed to shut off the water to the house, but it turned out to be a pretty nasty job, and so I grabbed Dean's help to do it. Oh, that's so gross. It just, it's like it won't fit over it. No? We were having a little bit of trouble, and so we texted our friends, and they sent us a nice little tutorial from the beach. So the little valve down in the water is probably about this big around. You have to get the tool on it and, and it just basically, you'll feel it. It only goes about a quarter of a way. Yeah, that's probably it. Is it turning? It's going that way. Should I go try, try the water? Good news, babe. That worked. Is that it? Nice. You don't have to stick your hand back in there until it's time to turn it back on. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a little yucky in there. I don't think mm -hmm. the camera could show. There's like little worms in there. Nasty. That's what I do. The nasty stuff. <laughs> hey, there's the little broken piece. Okay, got that out. I think I have the plumbing. There's like one, the hot water line. They have a copper line coming from the sink to the valve, which is weird because those are really easy to replace. Sometimes old houses are really frustrating. I'm thinking what I'm gonna have to do is break the countertops because I don't think there's any way that we can lift this entire piece of countertop with all the sink and the plumbing that is gonna come with it. Sounds like fun. It's gonna be a little messy, but I guess my kind of consolation is this isn't the most useful piece, like useful sized piece for someone. And so, I don't know, we've got some bigger pieces too we can give away, but I think this is gonna be broken. You're a wild woman. Whoa, buddy. No way. No way. Oh my gosh. Uh, can you get the door? You should go on American Ninja Warrior. And Andrea Davis, the DIY wife, makes it to the next level. No way. <laughs> no I way. Do you want me to help you? Or not? Once we had all of the countertops out, I was able to remove the rest of the plywood. All right, next we're gonna be working on the crown molding and I'm gonna use this Craig Crown Pro. It's a jig to cut crown molding that'll hopefully make it a little bit simpler. <laughs> Whoa, this is a little fancier now. Fancy. <laughs> the cabinets look so big. When you like take them to the ceiling for the crown molding, it's like this one doing instead of that. Through the gauntlet. That looks awesome. Hey, that's pretty good. What are you, some kind of pro? Oh my gosh, that jig is, that's helpful. That is actually really helpful. It kind of takes like some of the mental work out. You wouldn't think so until you go to try and cut crown molding, but it is like so confusing. It shows you exactly where to put the jig. If I get through this whole kitchen without it making a mistake, then I'm like, that jig is worth it. After finishing one section of the kitchen, I moved on to the cabinets around the range. I just got trim like eighth of an inch off. I'm not actually installing this one right now. I just want to go ahead and get it cut while I have my saw set up and I've got my little crown molding jig. Last piece, it's looking so good. I mean, I'm gonna caulk all of those edges so it'll be like a really nice clean edge. I just, I love the way that the crown molding just finishes it off. <laughs> looking so good. Yes, can you picture it? We'll have the hedge here. Oh my gosh, can't lose this. <laughs> I don't wanna cut any more crown molding. All right, crown molding is done. I'm going to actually start cleaning up. I'm gonna vacuum again. Our friends actually gave the cabinets a really good scrub, but I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum them out, do a quick wipe down. I'm gonna do some of the surfaces with a deglosser just to really take away any shine before priming these. And once I have it all cleaned up, I'm gonna start masking off around the walls. We're replacing the floors, so I'm not really worried about the floors. And if you're wondering 
why I'm here by myself and it's like getting dark outside. I came back to work, Dean's home with the kids, getting them in bed. We went home, we had dinner, hung out for a little bit. But our friends are out of town this week, which is like perfect for this kind of mess and getting all the painting done. We are going out of town next week and so we're just pushing and hoping that we can get it all painted before we leave for the beach. And it'll be worth it. What is going on here? I've got white eyebrows and eyelashes. Can you not? It's like after 1 a.m. <laughs> I'm like so tired. I think you need to go to bed, darling. Oh, yeah. You're alive. <laughs> I'm alive. What? I haven't filmed anything for the past 24 hours. <laughs> Wow, what's been going on in here? I've been slaving away. So what were you doing until <laughs> 1 a.m. last night? So yesterday I came back after our work day and finished all the prep stuff, got all of the crown molding installed, messed it all off, cocked all of the edges, sprayed primer on last night until 1 in the morning. And then I came back today and I got the first coat of the lighter color. So it doesn't look a whole lot different than the primer probably, especially on camera. But we decided to do all of these cabinets and the uppers on that wall, the corner cabinet, all a lighter color. And then just the lowers on the U part of the kitchen are going to be a dark color that we're doing on the built-ins around the fireplace. After finishing two solid coats of the lighter color with dry time in between, I was ready to clean out my gun and switch to the darker color of paint. Oh, Looking good. It was so exciting to see this color finally going on the cabinets because I spent so much time over the past few months sifting through colors, sampling them, and then mixing the samples to get the perfect color that I had in my head. All right, so what's the scoop? First coat of the dark color is done. Nice. So now I'm gonna go home. I'll come back later tonight. Do the second coat, right? Is that yeah. good? <laughs> and then clean up, oh my gosh. After I finished the second coat in the kitchen, I started pulling off all of the paper and plastic. And then finally, I slid the refrigerator back in place and was ready to call it a night. The next day was a really exciting day because countertops were getting installed. Does it bother y'all if I'm watching? Uh, <laughs> there you are you good? I won't get in the way. No, you good? You watch. And then this day got even more exciting because our flooring guys texted me saying they had another job get canceled, asking if they could come early to install floors. So of course we said yes, and it was so exciting to see so much progress happening, especially when we didn't expect it and while our friends were out of town, because all of this is going to be a surprise when they get home from the beach. We're back and ready for action. A little bit toasty out here. Once we got back to our house, we went right to work cutting the plywood for the shelves inside the cabinets. Okay, so. First, I used my circular saw to rip down all the plywood to the correct depth for the shelves. And then I had Dean pull out the miter saw so I could cut the different widths. Come on, you big beefcake. You have been fasted. It's about a thousand degrees outside. It's a good idea. Oh, 
All right, so I just realized I was looking at my length and my width different, and so I didn't actually rip enough boards down. No. And so now for one more shelf, I have to cut into a brand new piece of plywood, which is kind of sad, but probably even more sad is we gotta take the saw off. No. Put this plywood up there to rip it down. No. Good thing I have you here, babe. I'm sorry, it's so hot. We battle again. Let's go, big boy. Yeah! All right, ready for the saw again. Yeah! That's backwards. No. <laughs> no. Just be really Gosh. careful with it. It's not me faking. This thing probably weighs <laughs> 230 pounds, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling, have a drink. You burned it. We're hiding from the heat. It's currently only 95 degrees outside, but the humidity is about 45%. So it feels like 102 out here. And man, we're feeling it. Like dripping sweat. We're feeling the burn out here, man. We're feeling the burn, man. That's for sure. We just went hiking in Arizona and we'd still be out at this time some days. And it was hot, but it was bearable. It quite like this. Yeah, we could handle it and be, we'd be ready to be done by that point. But here in Texas, you sweat like crazy because of the humidity and i can't film myself very well so i'm just going to use this window hey guys after a quick water break i finished cutting down the rest of the shelves and then got out my sander to do a quick sanding on all of the shelves And this may look quick on camera, but it actually took quite a while and it was definitely hot outside. And again, Andrea's work ethic has never been a question. Next, I brought all of the shelves inside to get a break from the heat and I used my iron to iron on the wood edge banding. I only added the edge banding to the front of each shelf because that's the only side that would be visible. As Andrea finished up the edge banding, it was my job to close out the day by putting away the saw once and for all, but it didn't quite go according to plan. All right, Beefy, let's go. That's not good. Yeah! Yeah. Oh, uh, look at those paint pans. Ready? They're back. They're back, man. They're back in action. They are looking stellar. Could you give me a little twirl? <laughs> I'll link them for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Link them in the description. <laughs> Just getting a little morning work out there. All right. So we are finally, actually, for real, going to paint all of the cabinet doors today. So first up, we need to prep. I'm going to lay down plastic and a drop cloth because I learned when I was painting furniture that with my airless paint sprayer, there's a lot more paint and it'll actually soak through the drop cloth. But if I just paint on the plastic, it ends up flaking off and spraying all over whatever I'm painting, which is equally as annoying as a stained driveway. So plastic and drop cloth it is. But not before a yoga break. Okay, not really. We just got everything out and got it ready to paint. All right, so I'm actually gonna prop everything up on these little triangles that I picked up at Lowe's, and I've used Dixie cups a lot in the past, and they do work, but honestly, I feel like these are worth the money. It's like $8 for a pack of, I don't know, maybe it's like 24, but still, it's like you can reuse them. They're super sturdy, but they have this really fine tip on there, and so I have not had any problem with any sticking at all, and with the Dixie cups, it's hit or miss. Hey, get back here. You're running away. What you got there, madam? My octopus. Yeah, it does kind of look like an octopus. Is your octopus going tinkle? Time to get the party started? Ooh, yeah. All right, so I'm ready to start painting and I do want to go ahead and note that I'm painting the backs of all of my doors and drawer fronts first because that way when I flip it over and I've got it propped up on the triangles, I'm not as worried about if it sticks or there's a really slight imperfection. It's going to be on the back of my doors. Also, we bought all of these cabinet doors and drawer fronts from New Cabinets and I bought the pre-primed option so I don't have to prime. I'm going straight to painting and that was worth every small penny. It wasn't actually that Ooh. much extra, but it is so worth it. They're already primed. It's a perfect finish and I'm so excited to get some paint on these. This is a good
good thing about it being so hot outside is they're already dry and we're ready to get a second coat on the back of all these cabinets. Ready for can number two already? All right, is that it for round two? Sip for round two. Look, it's already like, it's already we're almost dry. All right, so second coach dry, ready to get everything flipped over, but it's getting hot already. I see you're wearing your pro painter shoes, huh? <laughs> is that what the pros do, huh? What do you have to say for yourself? Nothing. I grabbed Dean to help flip all of the doors over, and then I started spraying the first coat on the front of all of the doors. Really good. I did the paint a little bit thicker. Is it getting a little hot out here or what? It's getting a little bit hot. I gotta make sure I don't drip any sweat on these. <laughs> if you're not from Texas, you're probably like, what in the world? Alright, what round is this? Second coat. Is that it for these? That's it for the green. Now we got all the white. <laughs> There's a lot more of those. <laughs> oh, easy peasy, man. After the green paint was dry to the touch, we went ahead and moved all of the doors into our sunroom where they could finish drying and be out of the sun. Next, we brought out the rest of the cabinet doors and shelves that we would be painting a lighter color Benjamin Moore's Swiss coffee. We're out of room. We're okay. out of tarp space and I'm out of triangles. And I have these, I have like four or five more shelves and a big door. What's that mean? Back to Lowe's. Are you kidding me right now? I'll be back. You're the best. My, what large letters you have. I'm just gonna use the force real quick. <sighs> Well, I may specialize in slow lows trips, but I specialize in something else as well. Punch breaks! The place where dreams come true. Another successful mission. Out of the way. Let me hear you say it. You're the most best, most awesome, most thoughtful, most handsome husband in the entire world. After a quick lunch break, we finished setting up the rest of the cabinet doors. I'll hold it down while you get the tarp. <laughs> and it was at this point that it actually got so hot outside that the camera overheated and turned off. I don't know if you can read that. It says overheated, shutting down. And uh, we're trying not to overheat right now because it's absolutely baking right now, man. Filming on a phone. I mean, shoot. Next, we flipped everything over, I blew it off with a leaf blower, and then was ready to paint the first coat on the front of all of these doors. Alright babe, you can do it! <laughs> Proof that you can make super cool videos on your phone! Alright, is that it for coat number one? What's this color? Swiss coffee. Swiss coffee. Come on in here. You've earned it, babe. <laughs> Your second second sparkling water of the day. You've earned it. Thanks. It's, <laughs> it is so hot. After a long, hot day of work, we were finally ready to spray on the final coat of paint. One last time. Dean Davis daring to get closer to a paint sprayer than any cameraman has ever done before. Overheating. Come on, babe. And 
after a long day, finally we were able to finish. My feet are literally like burning on fire. I should have gone with that sock flop combo like you got going on. Look at that. Look at those. Would you look at that? Look at these. No way, huh? All right, let's get these bad boys inside. We finished up by taking all of the doors and shelves into the sunroom so they could get out of the heat and finish curing. Let's call it a day and hug. Oh, oh holy oh, cow, you are super wet. Wow. Another big day. After letting the paint dry overnight, we were ready to load everything up and take it over to our friend's house for installation. Since the paint wasn't fully cured yet, we loaded everything really carefully and added blankets between each layer. Let's go. All right, it's an exciting day. We're gonna go hang all of the cabinet doors. We just loaded all of them up in the back of our minivan. But first we need to run by Lowe's and grab some adjustable shelf pins. Get your receipt, darling. Thank you. Get on out of here. How was the ride, cabinets? everything inside, I went right to work attaching the hinges and installing the doors. These soft close hinges are from new cabinets as well and figuring out which size hinge to get was part of the ordering process and they were super helpful with that. Soft close. All right, so if you have never installed cabinet doors before, it looks deceptively simple, but each one of these hinges also adjusts slightly up and down, out and in, and then you can adjust it to tilt like this, and you wanna get that reveal to be the same on all of them, which is a little bit tricky. So far, so good. I think it's just gonna take a little bit longer than I thought it would. After finishing all of the doors on the refrigerator wall, it was time to take a little field trip. What are you doing with this? We're going to the glass door. These are for the hutch cabinet over there and they're going to have glass in them. It's gonna be so pretty. Wow, schmancy. We drove to a local glass store to see if they had reeded glass in stock and could install it in these doors. All right, thankfully the glass store did have it. <laughs> Dean corrected me because I said the glass store, and glass I thought, store. But I heard the together, glass door. The glass, and he said, wait, 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 you said the glass door. And I said, no, I said the glass store. And he said, oh. But now I can't say it without laughing. Okay, so tell us what's at the glass right. door. The glass door did have the reeded glass in stock. They weren't sure if they would have it in stock, which is awesome. And it'll be a few days until it's ready. They're actually gonna install it into the cabinet doors since I brought those. It was a little bit more expensive than I thought it would be. $4,000. <laughs> no, it was just under 200 for the two doors. Um, I think it'll be worth it because it is going to be a pretty big like feature of the kitchen. Once we got back to their house, I continued working on installing all of the cabinet doors. So hinges are a little bit not typical because I have a mix of old cabinets, new cabinets, and the face frame on them is a different size and so I did get creative so it all like lines up and like over here I want to make sure it'll still open with the countertop being on the wall there and so 
trying to remember which ones I got to go wear. Make sure I do it right. I can't believe I eyeballed that perfectly. Next, I moved on from the range wall and started installing the doors, drawer fronts, and hardware on all of the lower cabinets. From there, I installed the hardware on the doors around the refrigerator. Then finally, I started adding hardware to these corner cabinets before I had to call it quits for the day. Alright, so it's day two of installing all of these doors and drawer fronts. I ran out of time and didn't quite have everything I needed to finish all of the drawer fronts last time, but the goal is to knock out as much of these as we can today. Maybe even finish all of them, but these drawer fronts have been a little bit tricky and they're taking way longer than I thought they would for sure. <laughs> You think? They look really good. I was just saying, these drawer pools feel really nice. I think because they're just so substantial. Looks beautiful, just like you. <laughs> all right, so I finished all of the doors last time, and so today I'm gonna to be focusing on the drawer fronts, which I started on last time we were here, and they were giving me so much trouble, but I finally figured out I can prop it open with some shims in there. So I've been doing that. Prop that open, and then using double-sided adhesive foam on here to then place it where I want. And then I drill my holes for my hardware first. And once I've done that, I stick this into place with the foam, drill through the drawer box with the holes that I've already made for my hardware, and then I can attach my hardware. So my hardware is actually what is holding these on because you see this little detail here is really thin and I figured out it was just a little bit too risky trying to put the extra screws from behind. And so I'm skipping that step, but with these handles, the hardware holds it on perfectly. the drawer fronts around the refrigerator I moved on to the drawer fronts around the range but there was one last drawer box that required pulling the range out in order to install the drawer box you're so strong remember that time you went on ninja warrior and Andrea Davis the DIY wife makes it to the next level stop <laughs> Stop telling people that! Okay, she didn't really go on Ninja Warrior, but it's kind of funny. Wait, how have I not even noticed this yet? Thank you. Will. No. Oh my gosh. No. Look, this one maybe? <laughs> The final task of the week was to install all of the shelves inside of the cabinets using shelf pins so that they can finally move all their stuff back into their kitchen. That is crazy. That is so much space in there. Like so much 
storage space. So I know we did take down some of the upper cabinets over here, but on this side, there was just that little upper cabinet. It was not even half this deep. So we've gained so much more depth and that is honestly, it's just a ton of storage space for the things that you don't need every day. It's a great place to be able to put those. Alright, so we are finished installing all of the doors, all of the drawer fronts, all of the hardware, except for obviously the two glass doors that are going on the hutch. Those are supposed to be ready next week. We've had some delays because they have guys out sick. We're still waiting on the floating shelves. Hopefully we can get those two things in. We'll finish trimming out the window here at a light, but it is looking so good and they have like a fully functioning kitchen now. They can actually access all of their drawers, which I bet is gonna be awesome. They can move back in. <laughs> it is looking so good. Hey. Hey. Bright and beautiful day. All right, the glass doors are finally ready. They had a couple of guys out sick, and so we had some delays, but they're ready. We're gonna go pick them up, head over to their house, get them installed, and I cannot wait to see these doors installed. They're the last cabinet doors that we have in this kitchen, and they're like a feature, so it's gonna look awesome. Where's the minivan today? <laughs> Gone. After I brought the doors inside, I started by attaching the hinges and then attached the first door to the cabinet box. I repeated the same process for door number two and then installed the same brass knobs we used throughout the rest of the kitchen. After installing the doors, I was able to take a step back and I love the way these glass doors turned out. Next, I started working on finishing up the trim around the kitchen window. The first couple of pieces had already been cut, but then we needed to grab the saw to finish cutting the rest of the trim. What, you don't trust me to carry the saw anymore or what? This one's a little smaller. I started by cutting the two vertical pieces of trim and then noticed that the remaining piece looked like it might not be quite long enough. No. What happened? It's like a few inches too short. Next, I needed to notch out the two side pieces to fit around the backsplash and by this point my brain was getting a little bit tired. <laughs> What's going on in here? <laughs> that doesn't look like a happy face. <laughs> I'm feeling really dumb. I cut the wrong side off. Look what I did. Whoopsie daisy. It's annoying. <laughs> Thankfully, after that, I was able to get back on track without making any more mistakes. You got the right measurements done? I did. installing the two vertical pieces, I went ahead and caulked everything and then wiped the excess away with a wet paper towel. Alright, so we're going to have to pause there because the rest of the trim was not enough, so we need another piece and we're still waiting on those floating shelves, but hopefully they will be here soon and we can get this kitchen completely finished. Morning, darling. Got your box of goodies. Is that a magic box? Hey, wait up, you goon. This isn't funny. <laughs> hey, what's your problem in here, huh? 
<laughs> you still think it's funny in here. I do, because I'm thinking about if somebody was watching you, if they just happened to be looking out the window, that would have been really funny. That's funny for you. I'm sweating now like I <laughs> ran a marathon. Thankfully, after several delays, the floating shelves finally arrived later that week and we were ready to get them installed. These shelves ended up being a little bit trickier than I thought they would be, but after a few tries, we were able to get them both level. And then is this supposed to go all the way to the wall? Yeah. What's going on here? I'm back in the game. Spank it! Oh, that looks awesome. After I finished installing the shelves, I took a quick pause and finished the trim around the window before coming back to the shelves. <laughs> I finished putting the last few finishing touches on the kitchen and after weeks of hard work, this kitchen is finally finished. This is their kids' bathroom, and while we've been hard at work in the rest of the house, they hired another crew who's been working in this bathroom, but I got to be in charge of the design. Like this okay, whole wall so where would they maybe start? And you're thinking like the, like then, and they like, and like, like one row, and like then another row. Stack vertical like that. Oh, okay. All right, and then I was gonna do like a top piece. Oh. I didn't really see her. Okay, so when planning a space out like this, I oftentimes like to come in and actually tape out the size of the mirrors, the placement for the electrical. Um, I've already looked at light options and I have the sconces I want picked out. And you want to do that ahead before you have them run the electrical because these, um, it's like a round, the round part here and then they're tall and narrow. And so I wanted to be able to see exactly how high I want them to put that electrical box right there. Getting an actual visual on it is so, helpful because you do not want to have like all of your electrical done and then realize as you're installing it that something is just off like this is the time to figure out those details it was a fun change to get to do the design on this project and then watch the vision come to life without me being the one making it happen look at that as we were working on other parts of the house, we got to peek in on the progress periodically and about the same time that we finished the kitchen, the bathroom was finally finished as well. There are still a few finishing details left to do, like installing the baseboards, but overall I am so happy with how this bathroom turned out. This is our friend's living room and it is already a great space with a ton of potential, but we really wanted to help them make it special and unique to their family. The first step in a project like this is to meet with a client or in this case, our friends and talk through every detail, look at tons of pictures and get a good idea of what their design style even is. Okay, like I love the muted earthiness of that terracotta. Once we have figured out what their design style is and how we want these spaces to function, and the next step is for Justine and I to come in and start talking through every single detail. 
We talk through paint colors, flooring, furniture, furniture layout, rugs, accessories, and then make sure that the plans for the entire house flow together in a way that feels cohesive. That'll be easier to yeah. tie in since it's not gonna yeah. be right next to it. When I actually start thinking of the how actually to do it. it, I feel like this is perfect, right? It is, yeah. This I mean, is the West Elm swatch. The one from Maiden Home is called Cider. so pretty. Thank you. Tell me what you think that about couch. those colors. That feels really good. Thanks, bro. I can do a different sectional too. I just, something about that one I really like. What, can I do this in my house? <laughs> I think these in black would be really cool. Bye, Justine. Is this the life or what? Would you mind if I lay down there with you? Looking a little bit concerned. Who is this weirdo? I, I, I know, I, I know. I'd be getting up too. I'd be getting up that? too. Once Justine and I had landed on all of the major design elements, it was time to come back and actually measure for rugs and furniture so we could get those ordered. Got some helpers. Thank you. When trying to figure out sizing for furniture and rugs, I have found it extremely helpful to tape out the exact dimensions of the furniture and rugs that you're looking at to give a really accurate idea of how the pieces will fit in the space. Could I chew on that stick too? We will be going with a large L-shaped sectional in this room and I really wanted to make sure that there was enough walkway all around it and the piece just felt right for the space. All right, have you solved the mystery? I think so. This is another one of those like, you gotta plan. You do not wanna order the wrong size. Once I figured out the right size for the sectional, it was time to lay out all of my design finishes and materials and make sure everything felt right for the space. All right. So this is the part I get really excited about and that I've been spending a lot of time thinking through. We are planning to go with a really light, modern flooring for this house. Same luxury vinyl planks that we've used in the last big project we did. I love these floors. For the sofa, we're gonna be, do a really big, low sectional in here. And I found this perfect velvet. We thought of going with leather, but one, it's super expensive and it's just not as cozy as a nice fabric sofa sometimes. And since this would be their main piece of furniture in here, I thought, you know what? Velvet would look awesome. And this color is Perfect. This is actually gonna be our kitchen cabinet color that we are going to do on the built-ins as well on both sides of the fireplace to bring in a really rich pop of color and I am so excited about this and it's fun seeing it all here together. It is gonna look so awesome. And then this is the rug that we plan to use. It just adds some really nice texture. It's a nice light neutral color but I love this rug we put it in our closet and now i'm like where else can i put this rug this is exciting <laughs> i'm like can we be done with everything else so i can like put the furniture in here after all of this talking and dreaming and planning we finally had a really solid plan for this space and here is the mood board that we've come up with i am so excited about this design and now that we have a plan in place we're ready to get started on the first project in this room and that is modifying these built-ins on either side of the fireplace Ooh. Let's go. All right, so today's plan is to modify some built-ins that are around the fireplace. So we're gonna run over there, measure them really quick, and then run to Lowe's, get all the materials that we need, and get these built-ins modified. Let's do it. All right, so we are gonna be modifying these built-ins on both sides of the fireplace today and adding a fun arch detail and then carrying that middle bit of the shelf down. And so before we go get materials, I'm gonna measure. I've already kind of sketched out the arch just to make sure I like the way it looks, but we're gonna measure so we can figure out how many pieces of plywood we need. Once I finished getting all of the measurements I needed, we packed up and headed to Lowe's to get materials. All right, so I got all of my measurements. We're heading to Lowe's to get the materials we need to modify these built-ins and add the arches to them. Yeah. All right, the test of glory. It worked. We made it. Once we got back with the materials, I measured one last time and then got to work. Once again, the excitement level here is off the charts. 
I started by cutting my plywood down to the width of my built-ins and then brought it inside to make sure it would fit. When I got inside, I realized there was one middle piece of trim I needed to remove before I could test out this board. All right, so we're running back over to our house, which is like 10 minutes away, to grab a track saw, or like the track saw guide, I guess it technically is. This is the hard part about working not at your own house, is there's usually at least one tool that you forget. All right, so I got my Craig AccuCut thing, but I realized I didn't get all of it. There's a part that attaches to my saw. Apparently I'm like tired or something, but I'm gonna just clamp this onto the board, use it kind of as a straight edge, which I could have done with a board. And so now I feel dumb because we wasted 20 minutes, but it is what it is. We're gonna see how much we can get done. This is real life construction. After all that, it ended up working better to just use a board as a straight edge. And so I simply clamped that onto the plywood and then used my circular saw to trim off the edge. Thankfully, this time the piece fit perfectly. Nice. That meant I was ready to measure, mark, and cut the arch. I essentially used the same process that I did to make the arch doorways and put a screw at the midpoint of my board and then used a string and a pencil to mark the arch. Once I had it marked, I used my jigsaw and carefully cut along that line. Next, I gave it all a quick sanding, making sure to sand the inside of the arch to get rid of any imperfections left from the jigsaw. With that, our first arch was just about finished. All right, it's a new day and I have the first arch all cut. We checked that it fits and it does. We're gonna get started on the second side, so the right side of the fireplace. First, I need to measure, and then there's one little trim piece down the middle that I need to cut off and remove that. We'll cut our plywood and get started. Okay, we've cut the width down on the piece of plywood. I'm gonna go ahead and take it inside and make sure that it actually fits before cutting the arch because it'll be a lot easier to trim it down if it doesn't rather than doing the arch part first. So let's carry that in, check it out. Hopefully it fits and then we can cut the arch. Great. Once I had made sure that the board fit, I used my first arch as a template and traced the arch onto the second board. And then I again used my jigsaw to carefully cut along that line. All right, so while I was cutting with the jigsaw, it's pretty much impossible to avoid any little chips, especially when you're going against the grain. And so I'm gonna go back with a little bit of wood filler, just fill those in quickly and let it dry. And then I'll sand it down just so I have a nice, perfectly flat, smooth surface. After the wood filler dried, I sanded everything down to give it a nice smooth finish. Next, I used my Craig jig to make pocket holes all along the back of the arch so that I can easily attach it to the built-ins. Uh, you don't have to hold it anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
Are you making a skateboard ramp or? It's like a, a half, what would you call that? A half pipe. Next, I made pocket holes on the back of the second arch. It's so blurry. It's so This is a good scene for romance. Darling, <laughs> my love, you are very sweaty. <laughs> After we had both arches installed, it was time to cut a new trim piece for the middle of the built-ins. For this, I used 1x2 poplar boards and added pocket holes on one end to secure the bottom to the built-ins and then sanded the entire piece smooth. Finally, I attached the trim piece with the pocket holes at the bottom and then brad nails all the way up. It's exciting, isn't it? This week, we plan to take the next step towards the final vision for this space and stucco over their existing brick fireplace. Step one in this project was to remove the existing old trim and mantle. Like a lot of things in this house, whoever built this mantle did not intend for it to ever be removed, and so the only way to remove it was to break it apart piece by piece. Wow, we've never had a live audience before for the show. This is amazing. Don't do it the simple way. We actually pulled all of this trim off after working on the built-ins all day, and so after we finished, we called it a day and sat on the couches with our friends to admire our work. All right, today we are gonna get started on resurfacing the fireplace, but first we need to go to Lowe's and get materials. I decided to use stucco for the fireplace and so I grabbed Dean's help to get the bags because they were really heavy and really messy. <laughs> we grabbed three bags of Quick Creeks base coat stucco mix and two bags of the finish coat mix. Alright, we got all the materials we need and we're ready to head over there and get started. Once we had everything we needed and went over the general plans with our friends, we were ready to get started. What do you think about the uh, stucco fireplace? You excited? That looks like a yes. The first thing I had to do was cut off these bolts from the old mantle. Oh, it's hot. Yes! <laughs> got it. One down. Hey, you want to know something? It's what? official. I thought some of the other sounds were really annoying. Whoa. Last night, my plan was to use these bolts to attach the board for the mantle that we're gonna, we're gonna then stucco over, but I forgot that I banged up those bolts and now the threads are all smashed and don't work. And so we cut those off. We're gonna run back to Lowe's. Not a very efficient start to our day. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Let's go back to Lowe's. You sure do walk fast. Once we got back with the masonry screws, we were ready to finally make progress on this project. My plan was to add a piece for the mantle that I could then stucco over, and so the next step was to cut down a 4x4 and attach it to the fireplace. I used a large drill bit to drill about halfway through my board so I could countersink the screws pretty far into the 4x4. And then I marked on the brick where I needed to drill my pilot holes with a masonry bit. And once I had the holes drilled into the brick, it was time to attach the 4x4 to the fireplace and double check that it was still level. 
It's worth noting here that our friends actually gave the entire fireplace a really good scrubbing last night so that it could be dry and ready for us to get started today. After vacuuming up all the new dust I made from putting on the mantle and masking off the area around the fireplace, I was finally ready to add a bonding coat. Hey, what happened here? I decided to paint it pink. Did you film it? <laughs> I filmed part of it and then I paused it and I forgot to hit record again. I think this is the third time in a row that when I've left and asked you to film, I just... Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm not a very good YouTuber. I don't film things. <laughs> All right, you're back. Did you film yourself in Lowe's like I asked? <laughs> What kind no, of amateur are like you? you? I'm not a filmer and I'm not a social media person. <laughs> I just dusted it after having to make some holes in it and then covered the entire thing in this plaster weld. It's a bonding agent that will help the stucco to stick so it doesn't all flake and peel off later. Looks really awesome right now. Yeah, wow, it looks incredible. <laughs> all right, where to next? I need handsome helping hands to help me get the really heavy bags of stucco basically the plan is two kinds of stucco and i'm going to use one kind for the base coat that'll probably look a bit like cement and then you do your finished coat after that that's where i'm going to smooth it out but i need your strong muscles to go get this out of the car for me okay which which bag do you want me to get <laughs> Not the ones that are on top. Oh, shoot. Come on, baby doll. These are the 900 pound bags? Right? <laughs> yeah. Don't be showing them my glutes. <laughs> glutes are only for you, darling. <laughs> Dude, look at these plumerias. They're so pretty. They're beautiful. This should take about a year. After mixing up the base coat of stucco mix, I was ready to start applying the first coat to the fireplace. I used some basic stucco tools to apply the first coat and I will be sure to link all of the tools and products that I'm using in the description of the video. There is definitely a pretty big learning curve in applying stucco like this and it is way harder than it looks in all of the tutorial videos that I watched. You're messy. Bob Ross, what are we painting today? Happy little trees. <laughs> After I finished applying the first batch of stucco, we went outside to mix up more and I had to grab Dean's help to carry the bucket inside because it was really heavy. <laughs> Come on, man. I continued the same process around the mantle and the lower portion of the fireplace, but don't let this time lapse fool you because this took a really long time and was incredibly difficult. So after a long day of hard work, I finally finished the base coat and was ready to call it quits for the day. Look who's back in business today. Ooh, it's hot out here. <laughs> you look super energized for another <laughs> day of fireplace sore. work. I'm sore. I don't know how my arm's going to hold up today. You that got was hard this. work. But I'm also excited to see the actual white coat of stucco go on. It's going to look good. You got this. We started by doing a quick dusting off of the fireplace and then loaded up a couple of bags of finished coat to bring to the backyard for mixing. Gosh, so awkward. <laughs> It's like that toddler who noodles into his car seat and won't let you buckle him. Good job, babe. I love that sound. 
All right, so we got that first coat of stucco done yesterday. Today we're gonna be working on the finished coat. So it's actually going to be white, which is exciting. So we're gonna really get to see like what it's gonna look like. And we'll see, hopefully one coat of this is enough. We might need to. Oh, what was that? Tell me when, darling. It's a lot of flour. <laughs> I'm making a big batch of cookies just for you. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, don't breathe. Oh, babe, it's all pouring out. <laughs> Get a breath. Get a breath. <coughs> yeah. Handsome helping hands. You are so strong. After mixing up a batch of the finished coat, I started the lengthy process of applying the final coat of stucco to this fireplace. Even though this fireplace was a lot more work than I anticipated, it was 100% worth it because it is starting to look so good and is one step closer to that final vision that I have for this space. Still getting ready for paint. It's dark outside. I'm hoping I can get the primer on tonight though so I can have time to dry. Because I need to get all these doors off, the shelves off, and we'll see. We'll see how late I wanna stay. <laughs> After a few days of prepping and then priming, I got my paint suit on and was finally ready to get the first coat of actual color on these cabinets. And the crotch hangs like down to my knees. Look at this. <laughs> Yep. The paint, madam. Have you come to take ET? <laughs> the human paint shaker. Oh, looking good. All right, so we're actually gonna start painting the darker color on the built-ins in here, and I've got all the shelves and the doors laid out. I just need to finish masking off around the fireplace, and then we can start spraying. After painting the first side of the built-ins, I went ahead and finished the second side and then came back with a brush to take care of any drips. After that, I moved on to painting all of the shelves and the doors for the built-ins. What happened? I just ran out of paint. I just had one gallon of this color because we were testing it out. We kind of had an error in mixing it, but I think it turned out to be a happy accident because I ended up liking this just a little bit better than the color I was going to go with. And so they're actually, I've already called, the paint is ready. We just need to go pick it all up. Hello, paint store. I'm picking up an order for Andrea Davis. All right, I'll meet you up front. I came back, Dean's getting kids in bed. I just did a second coat of all of the dark paint, but I'm gonna start pulling off all the paper because I've let it dry for a little bit. I'm not seeing any drips. I'm excited to see this with the paper off because it is looking good. It's gonna look really black on screen because it's getting dark outside, but I promise it's not black. It looks so good. Looking awesome.
The next day, we got a call that the living room furniture was ready to be delivered. But this meant that we had to scramble to get the living room ready for delivery. And thankfully, we were able to get everything ready in time for them to deliver the new sectional. Friends are coming in town in two days, the day after tomorrow. They're getting back on Sunday and this is all gonna be a surprise because I haven't shown them any pictures of paint, of the countertops. They have no idea that flooring is getting installed early and so it's gonna be a really sweet surprise. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Let me just sit in it for hours on end and then cry and be so thankful. The couch and the rug and just the view of the living room. All right, so this week we're going to be finishing up the living room, getting it all staged, everything totally done. And the first thing I need to do is to actually paint over the stucco with the stucco paint. So we're running to Lowe's, we're gonna get that paint. I need to grab curtain rods and a couple of other small things. Then we're gonna get started on finishing this space and making it look beautiful. Okay, so first thing I'm going to to do is to paint this stucco on the fireplace, but Lowe's ended up not having the right kind of paint or the right color. They couldn't mix it. So Dean's going to go pick up paint from a different paint store while I mask off around this. Hopefully by the time we finish, he'll be back with paint. Um, I'm picking up an order for Andrea Davis. All right, I'll meet you up front. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. You have a good day. I appreciate it. There's just so many kind folks in Texas, you know? I just love it here. Let it go. Let it go! Turn and waste the door! Hello. I, I was like, I thought it was you. I brought you paint and a designer. Yay! Aren't they? Oh my gosh! This is what makes me go. Oh, he's in my house. I'm freaking out. There's so much better. Oh, I'm so jealous. Wow, it looks so good. This color is awesome. You did it. My friend and fellow designer Justine came over to help finish and style this space and she helped me make a pretty important decision. What I'm trying to figure out is if we even should paint it or what to do. I, <laughs> Bring in the big brains here. <laughs> I I really like it. I wouldn't paint it. I don't, I don't think you need to paint it at all. I think I really like the texture and like the different colors because of the texture. It just looks really uh -huh. organic. And I think if you paint it, you're gonna lose like the dimension in this like different color variation. A little bit of, yeah, that dimension. I, this is why you bring in the second brain because that was my one thought. I was like, I'm gonna water the paint down. I would be sad if you painted and it. And then we'll still see it. I we can always paint later. <laughs> In the end, we decided not to paint the fireplace because we really didn't want to risk losing that beautiful texture and dimension that it had. And so I sanded down some of the rougher areas and then vacuumed the entire fireplace. You can't stop. You can't stop. It's official. That is now the most annoying sound that you have ever made on a construction site. After finishing up the fireplace, we decided to take a quick lunch break with our friends. We're going to lunch! <laughs> lunch break! Bought the same purse and the same swimsuit. Like swimsuit with from an coffee. online store, like not like from Target, like, like a random, like small, a random store. small shop. And we bought the exact same swimsuit in the same color in the same purse. You know so. you're on the same wavelength at that point. Yeah. After lunch, we were ready to get back to work. We started by hanging these brass curtain rods that I picked up at Bed Bath & Beyond. We decided earlier that the black curtain rods that I had picked up at Lowe's that morning were just not going to work in this space, but these brass ones were perfect. For the curtains, we 
went with these natural linen colored curtains from West Elm and I say this with every project but it is crazy how much curtains can transform a space. All about the fluff, it's the flick of the wrist. <laughs> you see that? Did y'all stop beating this couch? <laughs> After hanging the curtains, it was finally time to start styling the bookshelves and this is something I have been looking forward to for weeks now. We wanted the bookshelves to be mostly filled with books, but also wanted to incorporate some of the unique family treasures that they've collected over the years. Decorating or have any decorating I'm gonna make sure that I'm not asked to do this job. That's right. Oh, I love the webbing on that side. The wisdom, yeah. styling the bookshelves, I was ready to put the finishing touches on this space. In the end, I love how this space turned out and it honestly might be one of my favorite rooms that I have ever designed. All right, this week we're gonna be working on finishing the dining room side of that whole living room open space. And kind of the main thing we'll be working on is a big gallery wall using a lot of the cool vintage artwork that they have. And also I'm kind of deciding between either buying a really big mirror or repurposing a mirror that they've just pulled out of their bathroom and making a frame for that. I just kind of need to think through that process and see if I can make that work and if it's the right size. So we might have a little fun DIY project too. We went ahead and made a stop by Lowe's to grab the materials I would need to build a frame around the mirror so I could see if that idea might work. Once we got back, my first task of the day was to start working on the collage wall that would go on the main wall of the dining space. I started by laying out all of the frames that we already had on hand so I could figure out which ones were going to work and if we would need to go buy more. This process definitely involves a lot of trial and error, but once I had a good idea of what I wanted to do, I brought in my friend just to make sure I was including all of the pieces that were sentimental for their family. I mean, don't, this is not like finished at all. Color. The different mat. Well, yeah, then the mat goes with. So you're already thinking think from the left that way, right? With different mats. Uh, It'll look awesome. After working on the collage wall for a bit, we went ahead and brought in the mirror to see if we could repurpose it for the dining room. I'm pretty good looking. <laughs> so this mirror actually just got pulled out of the hallway bathroom and I think it's actually going to fit perfectly here. So I'm cleaning it up and we're kind of planning on building a frame around it. It'll be a fun little project. <laughs> hey, take it easy. Okay, so I've kind of played with all my ideas for the picture collage wall here. I've got a good idea of what frames I might kind of need as filler pieces. We've decided we're for sure doing the mirror over there. It kind of fits perfectly, which is awesome, but I need to get some gold rub and buff and spray paint to kind of do an antique gold finish on that. So we're gonna go run some errands to get the rest of the stuff that we need to finish this space. But before we could go into Michael's, we kind of noticed that Chipotle was next door and we couldn't help ourselves and grab some lunch. Thank you. 
After lunch, we went to Michael's for a number of things we would need for this project. I grabbed spray paint and rub and buff that I would use to paint the frame for the mirror to give it a nice antique gold finish. I also grabbed a few picture frames that I would need to finish out the collage wall. If you break those, you're fired. Once we got back from Michael's, I got back to work on the collage wall to make sure my new frames would work. I also went ahead and ironed out this tapestry and this is something that had been in their family and I just love how unique it is and that it's not something that you can just go and buy at the store. Once I had all of the frames laid out and was happy with the way it looked, it was time to start hanging it all on the wall. Oh, you put up that picture of my grandmother? Once I had everything hung up, I was able to take a step back and I loved the way this space was coming together. Next, I hung up this unique light fixture and it's actually the same one that they had in this space previously, but I feel like it fits the new look perfectly as well. All right, so we have the gallery wall up and I am so happy with how it turned out. Obviously, I still have to get prints in about half of the frames, but I wanted to get up and just make sure I liked the way it looked on the wall. But now I can go ahead and pick out the prints, get those printed, and while we're waiting on that, we're gonna move on to building a custom frame for that mirror over there. And I am so excited about that. I feel like it is just the perfect, perfect thing for that wall. All right, where are we off to? Back to Lowe's. Again. I know. I'm glad this is like hopefully a fast project because it is like too hot to even be outside at all. Yeah, it's pretty hot outside, it, I would say. It's like it sucks the energy out of you. You just walk outside and we're both like, uh, I don't want to build anything. It's so hot. We made it. We made it. At Lowe's, we got the last couple of things I needed to build the frame for the mirror, plus a few other essentials. Yes, that is a yes. You look pretty good on camera. Once we got back from Lowe's, I was finally ready to actually start building the frame for the mirror. Oh my gosh. <laughs> heat wave, Texas heat like wave. Punches you in the face when you get out of the car. Just smacks you right in the face. I essentially made a box out of one by twos that would fit around the mirror with about an eighth of an inch wiggle room on all sides. Splendid cut. Another splendid cut. Then I cut decorative molding with mitered corners that would actually fit inside the box and this is what the mirror would be glued to. I attached the molding using glue and a brad nailer. Next, I caulked all of the seams and then brought it outside to paint. Chug, chug, chug. I sprayed two solid coats of this dark brass spray paint and then let it dry overnight. My clothes. The next day, I brought the frame inside and started applying rub and buff to give it a more authentic aged brass look. First, I applied a coat in the color gold leaf. I made sure to not apply it too heavily because the darker spray paint coming through gave it a really nice dimension that made it look more like real metal. Next, 
Next, I applied a light coat of the color Antique Gold just to give it even more dimension. Finally, we attached the mirror to the frame using a heavy duty liquid nails and then we set it aside to dry. Dry. While the glue on the mirror dried, I started putting the new prints in their frames. All of these prints are from one of my favorite online print shops, Juniper Print Shop, and I ended up having them printed at Walgreens to save time. No. You're getting rid of the bulldog for real? That was the only picture I truly loved. And after that, we were ready to start putting the finishing touches on this space. You might notice that there's only four dining chairs in here, but there are more on the way. In the end, this dining space turned out beautiful. It's cozy and inviting, but it's simple enough that it doesn't compete with the feature wall on the other side of the room. Awesome job on this massive, massive home renovation. The transformation looks incredible, and I don't even know how many hours you put into this project, but it's probably like a zillion. Yeah, I have been dreaming of doing this renovation for literally years now. Laurie and I started planning years ago, just little ideas and things like trying to get her style out and I love her style. And this project was so fun because of the unique style and getting to do it for more of our friends. And I love how everything turned out, of course. And it's so different from even my own style, but so beautiful and so fun to just see it all finished now. Yeah, I think you got to use all of your DIY wife skills in one single project. So it was really fun to see you do some incredible projects, ones that you've never done before, like building custom cabinets. All right, so we are wrapping up a big, big three month renovation. And now we wanna share with you where are we going for the next few months? And maybe you would like to start us off on this one. We're actually going to be taking a nap for three months. <laughs> it's called hibernation recovery hibernation. <laughs> I'm just kidding, although that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, so serious answer is we are actually going to be working in our own house for the next few months. <laughs> While we've been working in our friends' houses, I've been having these little projects that I've just kind of been writing off to the side in a list or just in my mind that I've wanted to do, but of course, you know, we only have so much time. And so we finally just decided, you know what, let's take a little break of being out of our home, let's come back to our own home and do some of these projects. So we are gonna start with our kids' playroom, which is a massive project. Andrea has some incredible <laughs> things planned for that room. Then we'll move on to our home office. We're doing a living room refresh. We might even get into our garage, we'll see. But these aren't small projects. These are not just side tasks. I mean, these are gonna be big and we're really, really excited to share them with you. So if you wanna go on the DIY adventure with us for the next several months, then be sure to stick around and we'll catch you in the next episode. my head. You got some beef with me? You want to fight? That thing again, huh? Mm -hmm. I cannot be serious with you when you're drinking. With my giant <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Wait, I want to take a picture of your feet. Why do you need to take a picture of my <laughs> feet? Are you saying that I have a bit of a dramatic tan line or what? <laughs> I want to get some close-up shots today. Let's do the circle zoom.
That session was amazing. You're hotter than Hansel. Are you just so happy to have people here? I got all my stuff so I wanted to fluffy. show you. Excuse me, I was just wondering if I could get an interview. I wanted to get your thoughts on the remodel so far. Oh, excuse me, I would like to get your thoughts on the remodel as well. Would you mind commenting on it? Did you say fart? <laughs> Did I? Kind of made it over a hill as far as. as <laughs> okay, yeah. is it gonna shoot really far? I'm like yeah. scared to open my eyes. Are you loving this new couch or what? Look at the relaxation. Nope, he's asleep. Is it gonna work this time? What? Never mind. The key to success is riding on a paper plate. <laughs> That's what the real pros do. This has gotta be the most amount of work that you've ever put into one room. <laughs> what? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Once I start laughing, I everything makes me laugh. Oh, you know what? I gotta say goodbye. Winter. Winter. We're gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> I love you. Winter, are you gonna miss me? I'll take that as a yes. Whoop. Goodbye, project. Well done.